It's Iowa-Purdue as we start the stretch run of the Big Ten. The Hawkeyes come in 8-1 and, and tied for first in the conference. The Hawks are thinking Rose Bowl and beyond that a possible national championship. Quarterback Chuck Long also remains a strong candidate for the Heisman Trophy. And Long's opponent today is Jim Everett, another in a long line of outstanding Purdue quarterbacks. It should be some air show. We're live in West Lafayette, Indiana. Sports presents college football. Live from Ross Age Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's the Iowa Hawkeyes versus the Purdue Boilermakers. And the Big Ten picture right now as we get ready for Purdue and Iowa is this. The Buckeyes and the Hawkeyes tied for the top. Just moments ago, Ohio State took a 7-6 lead on Wisconsin. Quarterback Jimmy Casados goes 37 yards to wide receiver Chris Carter. The big picture, both the Buckeyes and the Hawkeyes still in the battle for a national championship. And of course you would expect that our national title holder will emerge from the top 10 as you look at the next five there. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brett Musburger. It's football weather here in the Midwest. A little chill in the air and a little wind, just what you'd expect on a November Saturday here. And this is so big for Iowa. Not only is the Rose Bowl at stake if Ohio State should lose today or next week, but bowl scouts from the Orange Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl all are here taking a look at those Hawkeyes. How good are they? They're about to find out. Now let's go down and let's take a look at the Hawkeyes as they come out. Their coach, Hayden Fry, who last week brought them to that shutout victory of Illinois, and his field general, Chuck Long, still very much in the running for the Heisman Trophy. And across the way, here come the Boilermakers. <laughs> now head coach, Leon Burton. and elected to defer, so the Hawkeyes said, we'll take the ball right off the top. Iowa coming off that tremendous victory at home over Illinois, and of course, Purdue was shellacked by Michigan. So the Boilermakers with something to prove here this afternoon. Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes hoping to impress the scouts. As a matter of fact, you could call this a scout bowl. Not only do we have all the bowl scouts represented here today, but there are all sorts of scouts from the National Football League, and they are paying very careful attention to the two quarterbacks who you are about to see. Briggs kicks it off. It'll go on into the end zone. Kevin Harmon downs it there, and he'll come on out to the 20 yard line. So you're going to be seeing the Heisman Trophy candidate, the senior Chuck Long from Wheaton, Illinois. Behind him, he'll have the fullback out of Waxahachie, Texas. Ronnie Harmon, Bayside High School, Queens, New York. Scott Helverson's from Des Moines, Iowa. Apple out of Cedar Rapids, fine control receivers. Mike Flagg from Cedar Falls, Iowa. A lot of homegrown talent and sprinkle in them. With four linebackers rather than the conventional four. They ran Harmon right at those linebackers. What sort of reaction did you pick up from them? Kevin Sumlin in on the stop, as you see Sioux City, Iowa, Dave Croston, Tom Humphrey from Amityville, New York, as they break that huddle and come to the line of scrimmage quickly, you see the rest of their line, and there's the handoff. And Harmon is swarmed at the 25-yard line. Changing defenses. To do it, here they go again. Long back to throw. He drops it off to Harmon. Harmon with daylight, first down, and he gets out to about the 46-yard line, leading that play around the right side when they set up and drop it off. Now they hand to Harmon, he gets to the tackle and drives into Purdue territory. Now, second down and a yard, and Iowa with a squat left, and they run Hudson for another first down, and he busts inside the Purdue 40-yard line. Coached up there in the trolley. the call of the line of scrimmage, and Harmon is picked up behind him. Got a lot of talent out of the Indianapolis area. Here it is now, second and 13 after that loss. The fullback, Hudson, and he is hit right there by Kevin Roy. 
that's been very effective for him. He needs just over 10 yards for the first down. Straight back, great pass protection. Waits and goes to Clint early, and it's broken up in the middle. Splendid play by Jeff Lee, number 18. Here is their very tight formation of the punt, and he just does get it off after bobbling the snap. Griffin comes over. He'll let the ball bounce, and so the Hawkeyes have trouble again with their punting team. This is a first down for Jim Everett, and our first look at him here this afternoon. Rolls to the right. Complete. And a splendid catch by Mark Jackson, the flanker. Concern about Everett's arm, and of course, Leon Burnett wonders how hard he can throw the ball throughout the entire game. He'll throw it again. He's got it for his tight end. There's another first down. Down and Everett goes to the shotgun. Coach. Well, they've done it this year. He was trying to run off of it. It is Carter. Tackle at midfield. Now again, they give that Iowa defense a different look. They send Wallace in motion. Carter drives over the middle. Hey, he's got it. Steps to the 49-yard line. Again, for Everett and the Boilermakers. They take the blitz and drop back out. Protection, middleman, Griffin, he's free, 25, he should score, touchdown Purdue! Quinn early and throws it to him right there at the 33. He caught the ball early. He becomes their outside receiver with speed. Off a of play fake. Quick drop over the middle to Harmon. He drops the ball near midfield. Long put Harmon up on a wing. Drops back. Throws toward Billy Happel on the sideline, but out of bounds. It'll be third and ten. Another victim. Third and ten. Long is back. Good protection. Gets it off. Harmon with a great catch. And wrestled down at the 35. Show them that time. 33 yard gain for Long and the Hawkeyes. Chuck rolls to the right. Under pressure. Steps away from it. Off the pump fake, but now he will not get away. And he is down. Gain. Split back. Formation. Pressure drops it off to Harmon. On a little flip screen, and Harmon gets to the 35-yard line. Checks into that backfield. He replaces his brother for the Hawkeyes. Long will throw on third and ten. Now he's under pressure, trying to get away from it. He does at midfield on the run. Down he goes, and another sack. Sack for big yardage, and there's the punt. Oscar Bula's punt, Griffin. Makes the fair catch near the 20-yard line. Big one on CBS. Here it is, first and 10 for the Boilermakers. Everett is 4 of 4, 72 yards and a touchdown. They run the draw play with Wallace that time, the fullback. Devon Mitchell is still in. So is Hap Peterson at nose guard. Both of those players were shaken up last week. Everett drops inside the 10. Has protection. Drops it over the middle and a fine catch by Carter. Go. Right back over the middle to Carter, and he hammered right there. Amire is set to punt it, standing in about the 12. Low punt. Could be set up for a return. Here comes Happel. 
Coverage gets down and drives him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. We'll be right back. Iowa trailing by seven. That's C A T. Let's go back to V R E N T. All right, Pat. First and ten, and on the running play, Armin Jitterbugging gets to about the 34-yard line. Inside handoff and Hudson breaks free. He's at midfield. Inside the 45, down to the 42-yard line. Is Hudson. There's a split back along with Harmon. Both release as pass receivers. They hit Harmon inside the 40. Kevin Sumlin, number 44. And very hurtful to him. Second and five, and that time in the middle of that Boilermaker defense led by 92, Brad Horner. The Thanksgiving Day holiday. Football feast on CBS. Here it is long over the middle. Complete Helverson at the 22-yard line here in the first quarter. But trailing by seven. He'll throw his 10th pass. Tapper, he's down at the two-yard line. Five will join Hudson. And here comes up over the top, Ronnie Harmon. And he was in for the touchdown. The official waits on the call. Now he comes in, and Harmon has indeed gone over the top, broke the plane, according to the officials. I think it was on the second effort that time, Grant. I think the first time, he didn't quite make it. He rolled off the pile, and then you see him cross the line for the touchdown. I believe it was the second effort that Ronnie gave there. Great, great running back. Rob Houtland set the kick this extra point. Leon Burtnett and Purdue would fall into a 7-7 tie if successful. And that's where we are. With less than 10 seconds to then Iowa would go to the Rose Bowl. Here is Wallace at the 16. Wallace comes across the 30, out to the 35-yard line. The Air Force Academy also an attractive bowl team. And they continue unbeaten if they can win today. A fake draw, pass over the middle to Griffin. Ball is recovered by Iowa on the fumble. Fumble at the 45-yard line and recovered by Rick Schmidt, number 11. And that certainly makes up for when he slipped and Griffin took in that touchdown pass to the Boilermaker. Great, great right here to Wallace on the draw play. And of course, there's the delivery right there by Everett. But unfortunately, fumbles the ball for the Boilermakers, and Smith jumps on it, and the Hawkeyes have it. Come to the end of the first quarter. We're tied at seven. We'll return after this break in a word from your local station. Good afternoon in West Lafayette, First down of the second quarter. Hit Harmon. Harmon puts the tackle inside the 40. He's down to the 35-yard line. For them. The eye look. Take to Harmon. Comes back to Happel. Steps out of bounds at the 18-yard line. But yeah. Long nine at 12 for 140 already. Ronnie Harmon was stacked up and again stepped outside. And he gets to the one-yard line to fly alignment. They scored their last touchdown with Harmon. This time it's Hudson for the score. Up over the top. They go to the first back, who sometimes leads Harmon into the end zone. At that time, they just tuck it into the grasp of number 20, and Hayden Fry has another touchdown. I think he likes what's happening right now. Boy, I like that Hudson. I tell you, he's played exceptionally well. He's just a sophomore. You're going to see more of him with the Iowa team. So with the win, they go 48 yards in four plays in 50 seconds. And Houtman set to attempt the extra point that would put Iowa up 14-7. And the former star from New Trier High School outside of Chicago is accurate with New York. will have an update, too, to show us exactly how that occurred. And it's picked up by Woodson at the 5, 10, 15, 20, and he is met right there this afternoon and it is first and 10 ball is at the 21 and Jim Everett ready to go to work and he hands off to Wallace and he slips a tackle and finally station brings him down at the 18 yard line he figures to be a first round draft choice as does Chuck Long and Everett pulls out the throw for the eighth time today under pressure he eludes Cross. now he's on the move 
throws it downfield. Wallace is open and he drops the ball near midfield. And about 12 yards to go from the shotgun. Dan Devers. A blitz. A blitz is on. Davis runs him out. Everett keeps the ball, tries to turn upfield. Ball stays in Purdue's possession because he was the last to handle it. Purdue scored first. See how the wind affects this. It is held up. Fair catch signal by Happel. It'll be at the 44-yard line. A 31-yard punt. Came with uh, uh, Notre Dame, but Joe's going to have his kick of the balls on the field. All right, Jim Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Chuck Long in trouble. Throws it incomplete to the far sideline. And folks, they travel with a whole lot of people from the state of Ohio. <laughs> On the draw play, hit Harmon trying to get outside. But Tony Bisco, number 49. And right now they're watching a third and seven as Long calls an audible at the line of scrimmage. Straight back, back relief. It's the Hudson over the middle. The linebackers have dropped off into their zone. And finally, Bisco again comes in to make the tackle, but it's a 12-yard gain and another first down. Even early, over in the slot on the right. He'll throw it again on first down. Goes to the left, and it's intercepted by Woodson. Woodson at the 30, the 35, the 40. And Woodson comes to midfield before he is brought down by Mike Hake. That was a bad read by Chuck Long. Quinn Early was wide open on the other side, Aaron, but he came back for the Woodson recovery. Well, Happel try to put a stop and go move on Woodson right there. Watch here, number 40, Happel will try to bait Woodson, number 26. They get a little stop and then try to take off to the sideline, but Woodson's not going to buy that package. Steps right inside a great defensive halfback, as you pointed out, Brent, and certainly demonstrated it there. And he can run with the football after he, he gets it. Now it is Jim Everett who can get something brewing here for Purdue. They're down by seven, 11.36. Good backs are in there. Rodney Carter and Ray Wallace. Everett to throw on first down. To the right side, and it is complete. That is Jackson at the 40-yard line. Here's Carter up. This is like a trip formation. Carter being such an excellent wide receiver. And they'll run Wallace to the short side of the field to the 35-yard line and six for Everett. And again, Carter goes to the wing. They give him the same look they did on the last play. This time, they fake it, and Everett rolls to the left. Incomplete, he wanted the tight end behind Everett because Purdue should be thinking first down here on this third down play. A quick pass outside, and it's to Jackson, and he tries to get free at the 20. The 15 gets inside the 10-yard line. He is down there at the 7. What a great run, as well as he normally does. He came in here with a leg injury. Everett, stand up off the play fake, waits for something to develop. He's going to run for the pylon, and he's pushed out there at the one-yard line. He just did not make it. He's in. You can expect Purdue to run. He is directly behind Everett. Here is Midlock. Midlock, and he's in for the touchdown. Second and seven, 9-10 to go here in the first half. 
Long. Puts it out to Ronnie Harmon. And Harmon is out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Driver's seat as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned. If they can handle Purdue. Ronnie Harmon's down on the 45-yard line. And well, they just decided that they would make him go the long, hard way, but Long is such an after passer. The linebackers drop off. Long goes toward Happel out of bounds. Long is four of six here this afternoon. This is their seventh third down. He's flushed, moves over to the right, throws on the run, and it is complete. First down for the Hawkeyes. He hit Mike Flagg, the tight end, and off the head, Indiana. Chuck Long of the Hawkeyes calling an audible at the line. Handing off to Ronnie Harmon, who hesitates, gets daylight, comes to the outside, and he is tackled at the 38-yard line by Dishman. Purdue is back in three deep, and Hudson running. He's got room beyond the linebacker, flips the tackle, and he is inside the 20 before he's finally pushed out by Foster. Some very bad tackling by Purdue on that sequence. First and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Harmon sweeps to the right. Again, he finds daylight inside the five. He's down on the two-yard line. Then his error tells you Harmon hit it hard. Play fake, long to throw it, wait, go back, and it's out of bounds. Beyond it is Hudson, and he jumped a little too quickly that time, and he comes up short. Five second clock here. Just sneak it in there, Long. Not going to give it. There it is for six. So they'll quiet down now. At least until Jim Edwards yeah. gets something going. <laughs> That's right. This has certainly been an offensive first half. Still 5.55 to go. 34 points on the board. What you'd expect out of Everett and Long. And here is Hudson over the top for his second touchdown of the afternoon. Harmon has scored, and now Hudson comes back twice more. What was it Leon Burknett said to us yesterday? You, did you ask him how many points he had to have with, uh, to stay in the ball game? What did he tell you? He said we need 30. <laughs> Coach, you may need 40 or 50. <laughs> yeah. well, this was going in the first half. Iowa leads Purdue by seven points. We'll be right back. Into the end zone. He takes a bounce and is picked up by Hudson. Looks it to the 20, the 25, and he crashes down near the 30-yard line. What load if Wisconsin upsets Ohio State? I'll tell you, who, the ball, defensive restriction. Everett ready. And he will run Medlock. And Medlock comes out to the 37-yard line. Going to make to throw the ball. And they do not. And they come with Wallace, the short man, close to a first down. The punt. There's a big balloon on the field right behind the safety. And Everett keeps it for the first down. Back on the board again. They, they had a second down and five, and I think they punched out the first down. Here he goes. There you are. Yep. Hey, wide open, too. Indeed he was, and he just drilled Hayes. Number the ball. Second and four. And then he'll put it up again. This time to Jackson, who slips near midfield, and he is brought down at the 49-yard line and operating out of his safety position. First and ten. Everett pitches now to Medlock. Numbers one and two. We're off in our open. And again, they hand to the short man, and Wallace comes to the 35. There, I think. First and 10. Hayes in motion. Everett backs up. To the middle. Incomplete. And ball sailed out of bounds. Concerned. complete and that one to Griffin Hayes is to the right Carter and Wallace both come out he'll hit Wallace and he can't hold on to the ball Nate Greer a possession and Everett here with a second and ten pulls out 
gets protection, throws to the end zone, then out of the end zone, incomplete. Third and ten. This is the 12th play of the drive for Everett and Purdue. Jackson in motion. Both backs are out. And again, he has protection. Throws it toward Wallace, and Sims knocks it down incomplete. He was all over the fullback who had released out of the backfield. Put down at the 27. So it will be a 37 yard attempt here at the 135 mark. Kick is on its way, and it's good. We'll be right back. Against the Badgers. Riggs with the kickoff, and again keeping it on the ground. It is fielded on the bounce by Quinn Early, and he finds daylight. Can he get the corner turn? He's at the 35, 40, 45, and he is out of bounds at the 47 yard line. He they have one minute and 20 seconds to work with. And here's the fullback, Hudson. And he busts the tackle and gets to the 41 yard line. Have coverage of the Ohio State Michigan game at 1.30 Eastern time next week. Long over the middle completes the flag. And he is run out of bounds at the 28 yard line by right here. The announcement has been now. Long was pulling out. Goes the pass, completes the flag to the 15 yard line and another first down. Kathy is 14 of 21. Comes up with a first and ten. Great time. Incomplete. Looks so highly respected in the Big Ten. Harmon, and he is hit by Don Baldwin, number 98. But it'll be a 33 yard kick. And it's good. So Iowa will go in, leading 24-17. And a word from your local station. From West Lafayette, Indiana, I'm Brett Musburger along with Eric Marcega. We have just started the second half. Iowa with possession. This is the splendid Ronnie Harmon. Coming around the left side, and he'd be headed for the Cotton Bowl. But we'll have to wait and see. Chuck Long on first down, thrust out of the pocket. He's on the move here to the right under heavy pressure. Throws it, and it is incomplete. That's... This time they run the fullback, and it is Hudson who gets to the 40. A little better tackling here in the second half if they are to pull off an upset. Long's receivers are covered. He's on the move, and he's tackled inside the 45 punt formation, which looks like an extra point with the blockers on the wing. Oscar Barla gets it off, Griffin at the 10. Comes up to the 15. Tries to find daylight, and he is brought down hard on the 15 by Mark Cook. I was downstairs talking to him yesterday. I didn't realize how tall he is. He's 6'5", and every bit of that. Well, here is a first down pass. He pumps, his man was covered, steps away, he's on the move, and you can see his speed, and he'll just take it out of bounds. 13 to nothing. This is second and 11 right now for Everett. He'll throw it again. His back come out. Over the middle of Rodney Carter, there's one of their favorite plays. They call it Fan 89. Good protection. Throws downfield toward Griffin. Devon Mitchell is there with the interception. Devon Mitchell, number 21, pulled it down as the ball was hanging in the air at the 33-yard line, and it's a turnover by Everett and Purdue. He, he catches him right at the last minute. They think he's going to run out here to the left, and all of a sudden he sees a chance to throw the big one down the field, but it is underthrown just a little bit, and Devon Mitchell steps right in front of Griffin right there. Griffin does pull him down. Good. Great one he was. The stadium back in Iowa City, named after him. First and ten for Chuck Long. Drops it out, man's wide open is Harmon, and Harmon breaks the tackle and finally is out of bounds on that far side. Third. Chuck Long, a candidate for that Heisman Trophy, on the draw. Hands it off to Harmon. Harmon coming around the right side. He is tackled at the 44-yard line, bringing the Hawkeyes up to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. Again, the draw. And 
this time Hudson, the fullback, gets inside the 45 line, solidify that number one spot. And the Irish come up flat. Hudson straight ahead on first down for a couple of yards. An awful lot of ground. They're in their 3 4 this time. But they're bringing the outside linebacker. He's going to get him right there. What? He releases to Hudson, oh. and he cannot get the handle. Driver's seat. And SMU cannot go. They're not eligible, of course. Long, and Hudson drops two in a row. Tuck Long and the Hawkeyes are trying to avoid that here. Pasquale hangs one, and Griffin will let it bounce. It's going to be down inside the five. Covers that punt at the three. We'll be right back. 97 yards for Jim Everett and the Boilermakers to the other end zone. Squared off against those linebackers, Station and Davis. They'll run on first down, and the Hawkeyes bring him down right there at the five-yard line. Could indicate that they're going to run when they send James Medlock into the game. And here he comes, number 34. And a good run out to the 11-yard line. And Same setup. Number 34 has been a very effective runner. Here he comes. He fumbles, gets it back. And did he get the first down on the bounce? Punt from Iyer, standing back at the end zone. You take a look at the center of the snap. Another low line drive punt snatched by Norvell. And it was a fair catch there <laughs> at about the 47 earlier today. The Hawkeyes lead Southern Purdue 24-17. 6.26 to go in the third period. Long comes up with one setback, and they give the ball to Hudson, and he breaks through and fumbles, and is recovered by Iowa. It'll be first and 10. Six minutes to go in the third. Hudson again bouncing outside to the left. Woodson giving chase. He slips free of him and goes for another yard before Wilson can finally pounce on the Iowa fullback. And kick the 33 yarder. We are in the third quarter, and Purdue's defense rises to the occasion on second and short that time. Football, this is. Don't be surprised if BYU doesn't go to the Fiesta Bowl. Here is Harmon, jitterbugging in the middle. All day long, he has been reminding me of Tony Dorsett. This is a second and two, ball on the 16. They sweep to the right. Time he could not make it. 1,019 yards for the year, the second best in Iowa history. From the formation, they spread it out off a play fake. Clark was open, dropped the ball at the five yard line. Classic to put it down. And no good. What a big missed opportunity by the Hawkeyes at the 315 mark here in the third. He did not come up with that completed pass. So back-to-back -back failures by the Hawkeyes. Now it's Jim Everett. He'll throw on first down. Good protection. Carter's open. He's got it. Midfield. 45. 40. Comes to the left to the 35. Jim Everett to Rodney Carter, the leading receiver in the country. A 45-yard gain, and it turned on a West Lafayette. That play coming over after the catch. Pat Peterson moves on into the center down there. Have ever played on grass? They have been on artificial carpet. Now it was Peterson. They're aligned in about a four-three. Now they show a five-man front, and they run Wallace right straight into the heart of that defensive line. Breeze is there. Exactly what they're going to do, Aaron. Off a of fake. Throws one up in the air, incomplete, and they're so lucky that Norvell did not intercept that one. Now, he'll go from the shotgun. They run out of this formation too frequently, but not this time. He sends both backs out as receivers. He wants Carter. Carter steps out of bounds inside the 25. First down for the Boilermakers. 24-17. Boilermakers on the move inside the 25-yard line. Off a of play action, pressure, Everett steps away from it and completes the pass to the 15-yard line. Everett has thrown for 219 yards. Second down and two. He'll hand to Wallace. He's got the ball. Cannot turn the corner, and he'll be short of a first down. Now here it is, third and three. And from the shotgun, it'll be Everett and the Boilermakers. Here comes the play. Under pressure, 
Everett will step out of bounds at the 35, and a young quarterback, as he matures, will learn to wing that ball out of bounds. Jackson right here, and now the penalty marker goes down. Devon Mitchell is the center fielder and not the return man, and Everett over on the sideline, telling us in college football, Pat Snyder is the snapper. Gets it back to Schumacher. Not a good punt. Goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Buckeyes at the 34-yard line. They come up with Ronnie Harmon and David Hudson, and they pound with Hudson straight ahead. CBS Sports, second and six. They lead Purdue 24 to 17. Chuck will throw it. It's the screen. It's the Harmon. Harmon cannot get through. A beautiful tackle by Kevin Sumlin, number 44. This will be third and five for long. It's Harmon. He won't get it. And that was Kevin Hawley, number 99. It's an extra point alignment for Blocky. And the left footer hangs it high. Purdue will let it bounce. And it will be down at around the 27 or 28 yard line. He's playing as well as I've seen Larry Station play all season. He's number 36, faked the blitz, dropped off in the pass coverage against Everett. Everett under pressure and jigs Jeff Gross, number 76. Hammers him down there at the 21 yard line. Key day for Florida Bowles and of course uh, next Saturday's selection day. On the delayed handoff to Wallace, he comes out here to 24. Be an hour or two. All right, hot. Right. Here it is. Third and 14 for Purdue. Everett pulls out. Comes back to the middle. It's to Griffin. He's at midfield. The 45 down to the 42 yard line. Yards on only four catches. So indeed he can run. First and 10 for Everett and the Boilermakers. He sends Carter out. There's a penalty flag down. The pass is complete on the near side, but there is a penalty flag. The pass was completed to Jackson. Aiden Fry and the Hawkeyes waiting to see what the preliminary and Quinn will say. 54 on the left. So it goes again. And Purdue 2 for 10. And we just saw a five-yard penalty against Purdue there. Well, clean play ball game. So from the slot right, Everett to throw. Receivers are covered. So he runs into the 45-yard line, and John Freeze tucks him down right there. Carter is the eye back. It's an audible. They fake the Carter under pressure. Throws it complete. First to a first down is Marty Scott, the tight end. Right now to pick up the inside flick. That's why I think they changed that because Hawkeyes have hurt him with the inside flick with Stacey and Davis. On a third and one, double tight end, they pound ahead, and it is a first down with James Medlock. They trail by seven points. Again, a double tight end formation. This time, they will run again, Medlock. And Station says, I win this time. Back. Now let's see if Iowa recognizes it. This is Carter and Medlock in. They send Carter from the fullback spot. He's open with a deeper man, Jackson. And he gets to the 15. Hawkeyes need a win here and next week to get to the Rose Bowl. They take the draw. Complete at the six-yard line. Carter going over on the wing in this formation. Second and short, Wallace straight ahead, and he bangs in close to a first down. Off a of fake, Everett's under pressure, and a great pickup block in the backfield, and Jim Everett gets down to the one-yard line. Down, so the ball is at the one-yard line now. And here comes Medlock. And he is stopped short of the goal line. Well, back set behind Wallace. Carter is the man in motion. They go to Medlock up over the top. Touchdown, Purdue.
The official on the side of the ball was run, did not signal a touchdown. I don't know whether it was close or not, but there was a great deal of reaction on the part of the Hawkeye defense. They did not think he got in there. The point that would tie this game at 24. It is true. Now a field goal. The Rose Bowl in the Big Ten all up in the air. Teed up for Purdue. Quinn Early and Kevin Harmon set to return it. Along the ground, it'll be fielded by Harmon at the 14. At the 20, there's a hole in the middle. And he is down at the 27-yard line. Yard. And he had 201 yards in the first half. On first down, they will run the play right straight ahead with number 20, David Hudson, tied to the lead. But it's second and six. Off a of play fake, there's a penalty marker down. Chuck Long will keep it on the run. And he gets out to the 38-yard line. Motion on the offense. Then they run the draw, and Hudson gets out to the 30-yard line where it will be third down. Long doesn't like the noise. Long is back. He throws to Happel, and Happel is out near a first down with that shot and effort. He thinks he got it. First and 10. Long rolling to the right. Complete to Quinn Early. Down to the 45-yard line of the Boilermakers. Fans who have traveled here as they do every week when this team is on the road, and they're rather pensive right now. Hudson. Yeah. Second and nine. Long floods his receivers. Throws and almost intercepted. Another big play for the Hawkeyes. Over the middle. Complete. It's a Halverson, it's a first down. On a first and 10, long rallying the team. Harmon runs it, 20, and he's got another first down at the 15-yard line. Here's Harmon again, getting close to the 10-yard line. Second and five, ball at the 10 for Iowa. Harmon trying to sweep outside, and he will not get the corner turn. Iowa will run the clock down before they try their... They run straight ahead on third down. They get close to the 10, and if that is short of a first down, 10. Here it comes. He's got it. Iowa takes the lead at the 108 mark. We'll be right back. remaining here in West Lafayette, Indiana. And the timeout situation shows you that Jim Everett and the Boilermakers must come up with a one-minute drill. Kick is ready. Here's the kick. And here's the return by Woodson. Out beyond the 30, bounces free. He's got daylight, trying to get the corner turned on stem to midfield, and he's out of bounds. 56 seconds left on the clock, and Rod Woodson has given Purdue one last at bat. The ball is down at the 47-yard line. Purdue will go to the shotgun. Everett with time. Throws to the middle, complete, short of the first down. Rodney Carter, they'll have to hurry. Clock continues to run right now. Down toward 40 seconds. Bridge on the sideline. At this point in the season, you would expect Kurt Nepp to try and get the win if he can. Here is Everett back under pressure. And it is complete to Jackson, and Jackson steps out of bounds inside the 30 from the shotgun. With those 29 seconds to go, bad snap. But Everett, with a good hand, picks it up. Close complete to Carter. That's a mistake. Carter a mistake. He stayed inbound. Did not get the first down. He's brought down with the clock moving. Purdue will have to hurry. 13-12. Carter could have gone out of bounds. 
Now the officials could stop it. If the defense takes too much time, they can stop throw it. it out. We'll have to stop the clock. Everett quickly stops it, and time elapses on the scoreboard. Time runs out on the scoreboard. It is over. And now you should see the argument with the officials. The Purdue coaching staff out there all over the officials. And I've got to tell you, Era, that I think the clock should have been stopped with about eight seconds to go. Now, I happen to agree with Leon Burtnett. I don't know whether he would have won this game, but I think when the defense takes as much time as they did getting off the ball, that you should stop the clock and let them have one more play. Now, let's take a look at what happens here from 29 seconds down. Now, the first mistake in this sequence is made by Carter. Actually, the first mistake by the center. But Everett, now Carter should have gone right out of bounds. He does not. He stays inbound. Now watch. Time continues to run here at 18 seconds. Now you see how slowly Station's very intelligent. That's why he's got a 3.5 average. He's not getting up. He's not going anyplace. You see him? Now at that the last point, one over there. There's the ball the goes clock. down with four seconds. Three. See it right there. Two. They actually should have had a second. It seems to me the ball went out of bounds. Even after three. the ball was out of bounds. Yeah. Right, but I'll tell you, what a game. Regardless, it was a heck of a ball game. Take a look at the last five seconds again. Now here is Everett. He throws the ball. And the clock runs out as the ball goes out of bounds, but I still think that when the defense gets off the ball that slowly. Of course, on the other hand, you save a timeout for a situation like that. You know? Yes, that's right. They used their timeout during the course of that uh, second half. They were very costly. There's no chance. 